Hi everybody. Welcome to story time this morning. Give everyone a few seconds to settle in. Hopefully it'll be a little nicer today outside. Maybe some sun. Um, welcome anyone who is joining us today. My name is Elizabeth and I'm excited to share some fun stories with you today. Um, but first, as usual, we have to say hello to everyone. So let's get our hands ready. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as fast as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as slow as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as high as we can. Hello. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as low as we can. Hello. Couple more. This next one is where we cover our ears if we feel like it. Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as loud as we can. Hello! Bread and butter, marmalade and jam. Let's say hello as soft as we can. Nice job, everybody. So nice that you all are watching. Can I see your fingers? Open them, shut them. Open them, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open them, shut them. Open them, shut them. Lay them on your lap, lap, lap. Creep them, creep them. Creepy, creepy, creep them right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open wide your little mouth. Ah, but do not let them in. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them. Just like this, this, this. Roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them, blow a little kiss. Mwah! Nice job, everybody. Well, we have to share our letter today, the letter that is the theme of our story time. Today, we have the letter A, the very first letter of the alphabet. Let's think about some things that start with a. I am thinking about a red fruit that goes crunch when you bite it. Apples. Let's see. I wonder what animals we can think of that start with A. Let's see. There's aardvarks and ants and gosh, I don't know. What else can you think of? And actually, that is the theme of our story today. We have lots of stories about different kinds of animals. So, letter A for animal stories. But before our first story, let's take our stretch. Big stretch out wide. Big stretch up tall. Give yourself a hug. Tap your knee. Find your knee. Tap your nose. Pull on your ear. Not too hard. Rub your elbow. 
One more big stretch out wide. Big stretch up tall. Ah. Nice job, everyone. All right, if you're not sitting down, you might want to take a seat for our first story, which actually comes from a book called Peak a Zoo. A growl, a snort, a ooh, ooh, ooh. Let's play peekaboo at the zoo. Guess who? Peek a roar, says the lion. Guess who? Peek a says the chimpanzee. Guess who? Peek a growl, says the polar bear. Guess who? Peek a owl, says the wolf. Guess who? Peek a squawk, says the macaw. Guess who? Peek a snort, says the rhinoceros. Guess who? Peek. Ah, uh, ar, 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 says the sea lion. Guess who? What do you say? Peek a uh, boo, says you. Let's do it one more time. Peek a uh, boo. Says you, the end. Great job, everybody. That was a fun little book. We'll actually do another one of those later in the story time. For now, can I see your fingers? I have ten fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do things. Do you want to see? I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. I can squeeze them tight. I can open them wide. I can wave them all around. I can make them all hide. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them tight and hold them just so. All right, our next story today is called The Vinganani and the Tree Toad. This is kind of a silly one. Once upon a time, there were some animals that lived on a farm, and they were spider and rat and deer and lion. And every day, the spider and deer and lion would go out and work in the fields and Rat was the best cook, so he would stay back inside and make a delicious stew for all the other animals. And then they would come home and they would eat it for dinner and they would curl into bed and the little tree toad that lived in the tree right by their house would hop onto the windowsill and sing them their bedtime song, which went like this. Ta! Ta! And then the animals would go to sleep. Well, one day, Rat was in the kitchen making the stew while the other animals were out in the field and he heard something coming up the walk. It sounded big. It walked like this. Boom, 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 boom. And Rat ran to the front door and looked out and coming up the walk, there was a huge creature, 10 feet tall, covered in thick fur. It had claws and sharp teeth, and it was singing, 
I'm the Vinga Nani and I'm hungry. Ba ba boom. Give me your stew or I will eat you up. Well, wait a second, said Rat. You can't have our stew. This is for my friends who are out working in the field. No, you can't eat this stew. But the Vinga Nani just laughed, picked up Rat by his tail, carried him out in the backyard, and tied him up like this. Ga-bong, ga-bong, ga-bong. <gasps> Can you guys do that with me? Ready? Ga-bong, ga-bong, ga-bong. <gasps> and then the Vinganani marched back inside and ate up all the stew. And when the other animals came home and they saw Rat tied up and they heard the story, they said, oh my gosh. What are we going to do? What if the Vinganani comes back tomorrow? Well, they thought, and Deer said, you know what? I'm a lot bigger than Rat. I will stay behind. I'll make the stew tomorrow. And if that Vinganani comes back, I can fight him off. The animals agreed that was a good idea. So they had a crust of bread for dinner. They curled into bed. And the tree toad hopped onto the windowsill to sing them their bedtime song. Ta, ta. Well, the next day, Deer stayed behind, and she made the stew, and sure enough, she heard coming up the walk. Boom, boom, boom. I'm the Vinga Nani, and I'm hungry. Va, va, boom. Give me your stew, or I will eat you up. Huh, you cannot have our stew, Vinga Nani, said Deer. You already ate it yesterday, and this is for my friends who are out working in the field, so you just get right on out of here. Well, Vinga Nani laughed, huh, picked up Deer by her little white tail, carried her out in the backyard, and tied her up. Ready? Kapong, 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 huh. Then he marched back inside, and he ate up all the stew. Well, when the animals came back, they saw deer tied up. They said, oh no, deer, not you too. What are we going to do? And Lion said, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm the king of the jungle. I'll stay behind and make the stew tomorrow. And if that Vinganani comes back, he will be scared of me. So the animals agreed that was a good plan. They had a crust of bread for dinner again. They climbed into bed. And the tree toad came and sang them their bedtime song. Ta, ta, ta. Well, the next day, Lion stayed behind and made the stew. And he was ready when the Vinganani came up the walk. Boom, boom, boom. I'm the Vinganani and I'm hungry. Ba, ba, boom. Give me your stew or I will eat you up. Lion said, Vinganani, you get out of here. You had our stew yesterday. You had our stew the day before. And I will fight you off. I'm the king of the jungle. Rawr. The Vinganani just laughed even at Lion, picked Lion up by his tail, and carried him out in the backyard and tied him up. Kapong, kapong, kapong. And then he marched back inside and ate up all the stew. Well, when the other animals came back and they saw Lion tied up, they said, oh no, what are we going to do? If even Lion can't fight off the Vinganani, there's no hope for us. Spider said, well, I'd volunteer to stay behind, but I'm so little that the Vinganani would squish me like a pancake. All of a sudden, they heard a little voice on the windowsill. It was Tree Toad, and she said, <coughs> I have an idea. I will stay here and make the stew tomorrow. Tree Toad, what? You are so small and little, you're practically as small as Spider. Vinganati will squish you like a pancake. No, no, no. I have a plan, said Tree Toad. Well, okay, said the animals. So they all had a crust of bread for dinner again, and they climbed into bed, and Tree Toad sang them their bedtime song. Ta, ta. And the next day, Tree Toad, she was ready. She had already finished making the stew by the time she heard the Vinganani coming up the walk. Boom, boom, boom. 
I'm a being naughty and I'm hungry. Ba ba boom. Give me your stew or I will eat you up. And Tree Toad walked outside and she said, <clears throat> Hey, Vinganani, I bet you can't throw me. Huh? said the Vinganani. He picked up Tree Toad and he threw her in the air, but she was so light and bouncy that she just came right back down. Boing, 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 and bounced on the ground. Then she said again, Hey, Vinganani. I bet you can't throw me even higher. Huh? said the Vinganani. He picked up Tree Toad and he threw her even higher into the air and she came back down. Boing, 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 boing. Hey, Vinganani, she said. I bet you can't throw me as high and hard as you can. Huh? said Vinganani. He picked up Tree Toad. He was getting frustrated. He really wanted to eat his stew. He picked up Tree Toad, threw her in the air as high and hard as he could, and she came right back down on his head. Bong! Well, the Vinganani got dizzy. He swayed back and forth, and boom! He fell to the ground. Tree Toad ran and got the rope, and she tied him up as hard as she could. Kapong! 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 Ha! When the other animals came home and they saw the Vinganani tied up on the ground, they said, Tree Toad, this is amazing. How did you do it? And she said, I just used my head and the Vinganani's head to the end. Good listening, everyone. All right, we might want to stretch our legs. Let's stand up. I'm going to stay sitting, but you can stand up. And let's march. I'm going to march, 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 march until I stop. I'm going to march, 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 march until I stop. I'm going to march, 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 march until I stop. I'm going to twist, 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 twist until I stop. I'm going to twist, 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 twist until I stop. I'm going to twist, 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 twist until I stop. Can you wiggle? I'm going to wiggle, 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 wiggle until I stop. I'm going to wiggle, 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 wiggle until I stop. I'm going to wiggle, 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 wiggle until I stop. Good job, everybody. All right, let's sit back down. We have a couple more stories today. And the next one is another peekaboo book because those are so fun. This one called Peek a Moo. We did Peek a Zoo. Now we'll do Peek a Moo. An oink, a moo, a cock a doodle doo. Who's in the barnyard playing peekaboo? Guess who? Peek a Moo, says the cow. Guess who? Peek a oink, oink, says the pig. Guess who? Peek a squeak, says the mouse. Guess who? Peek a says the owl. Guess who? Peek a cock-a-doodle-doo, says 
as the rooster. The page turned. Guess who? Beep a ba says the sheep. Guess who? Peek a quack says the duck. And now it's your turn again. Guess who? What do you say? Peek a boo says you. The end. Great job, everybody. All right, we have one more story today, and this one is called Clever Jack Takes the Cake. This is a great folk tale that we love to tell at the library. Well, once upon a time, there was a poor boy named Jack who lived with his mama in a tiny house. And one day, the king of the land sent out an invitation to every child in the kingdom, and it said, his Majesty the King cordially invites all the children of the land to the princess's birthday party tomorrow afternoon in the castle courtyard. <gasps> oh, said Jack, I want to go to the party and meet the princess. Oh, his mother said, well, Jack, I, I wish you could go, but we have nothing that we can bring her as a present. Hmm, said Jack, I know, I will bake her a cake. So Jack traded in his old axe for two bags of sugar. He traded in his thin, soft quilt for two sacks of flour. He gave an extra handful of seed to the chickens for two fresh eggs. He kissed the cow on the nose for a pail of her sweetest milk. And he gathered walnuts, he dipped candles, and he dove into the strawberry patch for some of the biggest, reddest, juiciest strawberries in the land. Oh, and that day at Jack's house, there was churning and blending and baking. And when the cake was done, he said, and you can follow along if you'd like, two layers of sweet chocolate cake, buttery frosting that I did make, 10 tiny candles to light the way, walnuts that spell, Happy birthday, but what makes me oh so merry is the big fat strawberry. And he placed that strawberry right on top. And his mama, when she saw it, she said, oh, Jack, what a fine gift. Well, the next morning, Jack combed his hair and cleaned and he was all ready to go. He picked up the cake. And he started to walk. And he walked. And he walked through the meadow. And just as he started into the meadow, 20 blackbirds came squawking down from the trees, squawk, 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 and picked off a bunch of the walnuts from the cake. Hey, come back, said Jack. But the blackbirds were gone. Well, at least I still have two layers of sweet chocolate cake, buttery frosting that I did make, ten tiny candles to light the way, walnuts that spell hap day, but what makes me oh so merry is the big fat straw berry. Well, when Jack came to the bridge that led towards town and went over the river, he heard, pay the toll, pay the toll now. Can't cross my bridge till you pay the toll. And up from under the bridge came a huge, ugly troll with his hand out. He saw Jack's cake and said, oh, I'll take that instead. No, this is for the princess, said Jack. Really, you can't have it. But... I could give you one layer. Oh, good enough, said the troll, and he took one layer of Jack's cake and he scarfed it down and went back under the bridge. Well, Jack ran across as fast as he could, and he said, oh, well, at least I still have one layer of sweet chocolate cake, but 
buttery frosty that I did make. Ten tiny candles to light the way. Walnuts that spell hap day. But what makes me oh so merry is the big fat straw berry. Well, then Jack entered the forest. Even in the middle of the day, the forest was filled with twisted trees and oh, it was oh so dark. The wind blew whoosh, whoosh, and Jack was scared. He started to shake. He said, oh, I just need to light a candle so I don't lose the path and get lost in here forever. So he lit one of the candles. It made a little glow just enough to see where he was going. But the wind whistled whoosh, and the candle blew out. So he lit another and another all the way through the forest until he came out into the sunshine. He looked at his cake. Oh, one candle left. At least I still have one layer of sweet chocolate cake, buttery frosting that I did make, one tiny candle to light the way, walnuts that spell hap day, but what makes me oh so merry is the big fat straw berry. While on the road, bear, uh, Jack came across a huge bear who danced by Jack and said, Yum! I love cake! And he threw Jack into the air and he swallowed the entire cake in one gulp. Oh, oh no, my gift for the princess, said Jack. But the bear did not like strawberries. He spit out that strawberry and it went flying in the air and Jack ooh, caught it. He ran away singing, well, at least I still have one bear spit strawberry, but I don't feel so merry. Finally, Jack arrived at the castle. He saw there was a line of children outside practically a mile long, just waiting to give gifts to the princess. He saw the princess sitting on her golden throne, but she did not look happy. She looked very tired and a little bit bored. Thank you for the tiara, she said. Thank you for the rubies. A guard came up to Jack and said, Young man, what have you brought for the princess? I just brought one big Juicy strawberry? It's, it's all I have, said Jack. <gasps> Don't you know that our princess is allergic to strawberries? One bite and she will swell up like a balloon. Give that to me now. And the guard grabbed the strawberry from Jack and bear spit and all oh, gulped it down. Oh, Jack wanted to cry, but he did not. He waited in the long line and when it was his turn, he stepped up to the princess. She looked like she wanted to take a long nap, but when she saw Jack, she said, Hmm, no rubies, no diamonds, nothing in your hands. <gasps> she seemed excited. What have you brought me? Jack gave a big gulp. <clears throat> he took a deep breath <sighs> and he shuffled his feet. He knelt down before her. He said, Your Highness, let me tell you what happened. And he told the princess all about trading his axe, his quilt, the baking, the two layers of sweet chocolate cake, buttery frosty that I did make, ten tiny candles to light the way, walnuts that spell happy birthday, the big fat straw fairy that had made him oh so merry. He told her about the blackbirds, the wild-haired troll, the wind in the dark forest, whoosh, the dancing bear, the strawberry going and the guard eating it. Oh, he waited for her to yawn, to send him away, to say, guards, lock him up in the dungeon. But the princess jumped up. <gasps> A story, she said. You told me a story, and it was an adventure story. My favorite kind. What a wonderful gift. Then the princess said, it is time for birthday cake, and my new friend Jack will have the honor of cutting it. Out rolled 
a magnificent cake from the castle, and Jack cut pieces for all of the children. A month later, a new invitation came to every child's door. Her Majesty the Princess and her best friend Jack cordially invite all the children of the realm to a spring picnic tomorrow afternoon in the castle courtyard. Bring your balls and your hoops and your favorite treats, but no strawberries. And Jack and the princess lived happily ever after. The end. Great listening, everybody. That was a longer story. I hope you still liked it. And now we are all out of time, so it is time to say goodbye. Remember that you can watch story times Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. It's always a new person and something new, so you get lots and lots of great stories on, on AADL TV. Uh, so let's, let's wave goodbye, and we will see you next time. Thanks so much for listening.